welcome to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is slow cooked pasta sauce. We all know how difficult it is to know what to make for supper or for our dinner and if you're a student or a stay home mom or if you're working outside and your schedule is really busy, this recipe is for you. All you need to do is have a slow cooker and a few simple ingredients, put it all in and at the end of your day when you get home, you will have a delicious pasta supper. I've tried to make some of my dishes to be a little more simpler because we all know it's difficult to make a really good home made meal and not have a little bit of prep. Some things could take, uh, you would have to do on your day off work and some more things you can do right after work. But for this recipe, it is absolutely delicious and this pasta sauce you can bottle it in your mason jars or put it in freezer tubs freezer bags and have it for when you need it all you got to do is rewarm it so what I'm going to do now is start putting the ingredients into the slow cooker we'll talk a little bit about the slow cooker as I go and then I'll tell you to mount as we go Okay, so some of these things you can prep the night before, um, like the carrot. We, I got two carrot that's cut off in small, very small cubes. I love carrot in my pasta sauces, and, and if you haven't had it before, you will love it. I got peppers, uh, just regular bell peppers, and I got four different, uh, three different kinds there, but uh, I just displayed a couple there to show. Um, we need two of those chopped up, or you can have whatever kind or color you like. I get a medium onion, white onion cut up into little cubes, a can, it's in a bottle, but it was a can of pasta sauce and you can get any flavor you want, extra spicy or whatever. I got a, about two cups of tomatoes, it's canned tomatoes chopped. You can use fresh tomatoes if you want to and use about three of those. I get a can of uh, the mushrooms and it's the stems and the mushrooms. I get two tablespoonfuls of my hands and way two tablespoonfuls of brown sugar. You could use honey. I'll put this down. And then I get a variety of spices with our seasonings that I'm going to be showing you. I won't name them all off now. And I get about a pound to two pounds of lean ground beef. The reason for the lean ground beef because when you put it in your slow cooker you are not going to touch this no more and you don't want a lot of oil build up in it and we'll use about a tablespoonful of olive oil just to kick up that flavor so all right so i'm going to start putting everything in there and i'll tell you the melts now this is only a small slow cooker but it do make a lot of sauce on your slow cooker, as you can see, you got your warm button, you got your low button, medium button, and your warm button. So when we start this, we're going to be starting it on low because if you're cooking this and leaving it and going to work, you don't need it any higher than on the low button. And I'll talk a little bit about, about that more as we go. I'm going to be putting the pound to two pounds of lean ground beef directly into my slow cooker. Now what I'm going to do is start adding in the seasonings and I'll tell you each one and the amount as we go. Okay, we're going to use about a teaspoonful of olive oil so you can eyeball that or you can measure it. A half a teaspoonful of cayenne pepper and if you don't like the kick in cayenne pepper you could use less but it will blend together with the brown sugar and it will bring it that spicy and sweet kind of taste. I get a half teaspoonful of black and white pepper but you could use just one kind if you want to and a little bit more. I also got a half a teaspoonful of sea salt just toss it on in on top. Um, half a teaspoonful of onion powder. The recipe for this res the the recipe for this today will be posted in under our video as well, so you will have access to that. I got two cloves of garlic and I got it diced. If you don't have access to garlic because you're in school and you want to use garlic powder you can use garlic powder, that's not a problem. So I'm using two cloves of chopped garlic, so you could use probably a teaspoonful of the 
I guess the grated garlic the, if if you don't have that at hand. I got a tablespoonful of Italian seasoning. So the reasons for using the Italian seasoning, of course, you'll you'll bring in all those flavors. It's got thyme, it's got basil, it's got sage, savory, oregano. Um, if you don't have access to just one package of Italian seasoning, you can use a little bit of all of those together. So, and then if you got a little bit extra time on end and you want to brown off your ground beef first, you can do that certainly. We know that browning off our ground beef gives it that extra flavor and locks it in there. But remember, this slow cook meal is not to make more work, is to make less work. So doing it this way, trust me, when you see the end result, you will be so amazed with it. I got two tablespoonfuls of brown sugar. Again, you can use honey if you don't have access to brown sugar. I'm sure if you're in school you're not baking, but you might have honey for your tea or whatnot. So you just toss that right on in with the ground beef. So toss the brown sugar on into with the ground beef and seasoning. So before we do anything, we're going to mix all these seasonings um, equally around the ground beef because I want for those flavors to infuse in that in that meat and then build the flavors. So what we'll do next is start layering in our vegetables. So we're going to put the two chopped carrots right on into with the meat. This, like I was saying at the beginning, those carrots is going to bring up their flavor so much you're going to be so grateful you did it. Um, also put in your medium chopped onion well, medium to a large and again if you don't have access to onion because you're in school and you you don't want to have to go out and buy it just use your your seasonings onion powder garlic powder this is two medium peppers but I just got a variety of colors pop that on in there this is probably making you hungry just looking at this much so what I'm going to do now is stir all that in together Now the seasonings I use is the ones that I like to make my sauces with when I'm doing this pasta sauce. But if you like it a little bit more spicy, I know my sons like to kick it off that extra notch, but we don't like it like that very often. So, but if you do, you can add in the spices that you like to add in. So what I got here now is my mushrooms, tomatoes, canned tomatoes, and sauce. I'm going to start adding this into the pot and we'll stir that around and I'll tell you what's next. So this canned uh, mushrooms, I drained off the juice first. So before you add it into your pot, make sure you drain off all the juice because you don't need that. This is about two, two cups of tomato, uh, canned tomatoes. Um, you could use less if you want to. Keep the juice on this. And if you only want to use the fresh tomatoes, cut up about three with the juice that comes from it. So just toss that on in there. And this is just a large can of tomato sauce, or pasta sauce. You could use the original or you could use the ones that got all the flavors. But original is fine because you got everything in your slow cooker. So toss that on in as well. So now we're going to mix this in. So what I did is put in about a quarter of a cup of water into my bottle here and if you, you don't have a bottle of pasta sauce you, if, and you got the can, put it into your can and just to get all of that pasta uh, sauce out of the container and pour it on into your slow cooker. So basically that's just to clean out your, your bottle or your can. So what I'm going to do is stir this around but before I do we'll talk a little bit about your slow cooker. If you got a slow cooker, and of course some got the big huge ones and you want to make a big pot of that, that's fine as well. But remember to keep it on low. If you're going to work and keep it in a secure place, like on a stove top, a counter that got, you know, free of anything around it, because this gets a little hot and you don't want to lean it against anything. 
Um, this pasta sauce cooks anywhere from uh, six hours. If uh, if you're on before six hours, you can take it uh, take it out, stir it around, add some more seasonings. If you're at work for eight or nine, that's fine. It's still in the pot. But remember, any longer than that it would make it start to you know lose its uh, amount of liquid. You don't want to burn it um, or dry it out, of course. But it should be fine up until that point. So let's stir this now, and I'll show you what it looks like. So just stir this around and the reason for stirring it is to get equal amount of ground beef, equal amount of vegetables, seasoning, etc. all together so that when you leave it like this, just pack it down a little bit like that and just look, it's, it's a full pot and it's, your place is going to smell amazing. After you do that, you can clean around any sauce you got around the top, but you just put your lid on. You don't need to touch it anymore until you get back from work or from an appointment or school. So after you've got everything put into your pot and if you've got anything spilled up around, just, just wipe it off and then put your lid on. Um, I've had a lot of requests for slow cooked meals and I did a couple of microwave ones. Um, I'm a big uh, let's cook on the stove kind of cook and baker, you know, but I am going to bring some slow cooked meals to you um, the way that I would do it because even though that I'm not working outside of my home, I certainly like to have a nice pot of something cooking that I don't have to fuss with. So what I'm going to do now is show you my already made slow cooked pasta sauce that I did yesterday and I put it in a bottle but I do have some to show you what it's like warmed and then I'll show you the pasta I'm just going to use a basic uh, spaghetti and, and I'll talk a little bit about that but I'll just get that now and show you what it looks like so this is my pasta sauce that came out of this slow cooker after I add it in there for seven hours, but like you said, you can keep it in there a little longer if you're going to be at work and on a low temperature. And this, well, you can keep this in your fridge for up to a couple of weeks, but if you add it put into separate uh, mason jars like this, you only get to take out one as you need it. Of course, this is a huge amount for anyone that's in school or you only adjust your two selves. Or you can put it into freezer containers and freeze it, date it, and take it out whenever you want it. You can leave it in there until it's all gone. I got some warming. I got some pasta put on that you only need to cook for about six minutes until it's just about cooked. I'm going to bring that over to my counter, show you what that looks like, and show you what the warm pasta sauce looks like. And before I get my sauce and the pasta, I'm going to just show you, after you had boiled your water, just in case there's somebody out there that haven't really cooked pasta on their own before, you got to have the water at a boiling point. Then you put about a half a teaspoon full of salt, give it that seasoning. That's the only time you'll season your pasta while it's cooking. Then you put just a drizzle of olive oil just to give that nice silkiness. Um, when you're taking your pasta you put your finger like your fingers like this. This is one serving. So once you put it between your two fingers, break it or put it in all. Put it into your pot. Start it cooking back on a, a medium temperature for about six minutes or less. So I'm going to put it back on my stove and then I'm going to show you what the final result is. So of course you're gone to work all day or even if you're home and you're doing a ton of stuff, you get in the door, your pasta sauce is all ready to go. Six minutes or less for your spaghetti, macaroni, penne noodles, whatever you would like to use. Before you drain off your noodles, um, take off about a quarter of a cup or less for your starch to put in with your, your pasta sauce just to give it that little starchiness. Your, your olive oil, just do a little drizzle over your 
pasta and this would keep it from sticking together if you've got it setting out for a little bit while you're waiting to use it. So I'm going to show you now what the pasta sauce looks like and put the starch in with it, the starch water. It's going to be delicious. So I'm just going to pour a drop of this uh, pasta water in there right now because it's only just maybe a cup or two of pasta sauce that I'm using there. But as you can see, you can see the, the carrot, the, the peppers, the ground beef, onions, and the smell is just absolutely delicious. So that's your sauce after you've taken it out of the pot. And my pasta that we, we just cooked, I'm just going to put some in this bowl here and show you what that looks like and then we're going to top it with a really nice amount of the sauce. And like I said, if you're not a pasta a spaghetti lover, you could use whatever pasta you like. I'm just going to toss it over here. Just look how delicious that looks. Now I like just the sauce put over my spaghetti with some of the, the spaghetti showing. But if you like it tossed into it, you could put the spaghetti into the sauce, the amount that you want, and then take um, the equal amount and just douse it right around. I got some freshly grated Parmesan cheese um, and I got some of the, the store-bought Parmesan cheese. So whatever you got available is going to be equally delicious. I'm just going to put the freshly grated. I'm going to put some more pepper and this is what your slow cooked pasta sauce is going to look like. I'm just going to put a little bit of celery leaf over the top of mine just to bring out that color and flavor. Now what do you think? If I haven't convinced you, you are buying yourself a slow cooker. I'm going to call this my comfort food because I love pasta. I love to just have it like this, sit down, watch a nice movie and well yes, have a nice glass of red wine with this or if you don't like wine, a nice tall glass of water. So what I'm going to do now is have a little taste of my sauce and my pasta and, show, and tell you what it tastes like. Mmm, absolutely delicious. For me, the flavors is balanced really good. If you like it a little bit more spicy, like I said, you can kick it up a notch. But this is two thumbs up by Bonita's Kitchen. So I hope you found this recipe for slow cooked pasta sauce helpful for you today. And if so, and you don't have yourself a slow cooker already, this is probably something that you should own if you've got a busy schedule. And I will provide more recipes as we go for slow cooked meals, just because I know how busy everybody's lives is. And remember, I'm going to have a recipe posted, and we always do. And under our videos, you will see the recipe in detail of what you would need. Um, keep your slow cooker on low if you're gone for the day. If you're going to be home and you just want it within like four hours, put it on high to cook it. But most definitely secure place on low. And again, we will try to get more and more recipes like this. We're all about traditional Newfoundland recipes, but we also post viewers' requests, uh, bonita suggestions, and so many more delicious recipes, just so that it make it easier for you and is enjoyable for us. And if you haven't subscribed to Bonita's Kitchen already, please do so. We'd like to get more people just viewing our channel and enjoying all of these recipes. You can also visit us on www.bonitaskitchen.com and you can visit us as well on our Facebook page. Thank you for joining us once again today for my recipe for slow cooked pasta sauce. And from our kitchen to yours, Thank you for joining us and you have a wonderful day. So thank you for joining us on Bonita's Kitchen today. We forgot my words. Thank you for joining us once again today for the...